am I a rogue? Or have I gone rogue? Dungeons and Dragons and demon worshipping. Back in 1992, I was in grade 8 at a Christian college, new to high school. I remember a few boys playing a strange game in the library at lunchtime, a game that I found out later to be Dungeons and Dragons, a fantasy tabletop role-playing game. I didn't really have any interest in it, I was usually preoccupied with reading all about medieval weaponry in the library, but I sometimes would eavesdrop on their D&D sessions just to see what it was all about. In 1993, moral panic set in. The school deemed Dungeons and Dragons a crime against humanity, and outright banned it. It was teaching children all about demons, sorcery, Satanism, witchcraft, and murder. In class, the pastors would show us videos about the horrors of Dungeons and Dragons and how it was tearing the moral fabric of society apart. But I wasn't buying it. I had seen boys playing it, and it was nothing like what the school was making out. So what did I do now that Dungeons & Dragons was banned? I started playing it, of course. How I became a thief. In 1993, we were playing the second edition of Dungeons & Dragons. We would never play at school, as that was a guaranteed way to get a one-way ticket to the principal's office. Guess who else played? The pastor's sons. There were two pastors at school who had sons, and both of them started playing D&D after the school-wide ban had set in. As I've said before, bans never work. They only serve to send these things underground and often popularise the banned activity. I knew a boy in my grade and his older brother who pretty much lived by themselves. Their Australian dad would spend large amounts of time away working on oil rigs. I'm not sure where their Singaporean mum was, Singapore I suppose, but I knew they had access to lots of foreign games and usually lived alone. So we would play at their house under the guise of doing homework or whatever else. In D&D, there are a number of so-called character classes that all players must choose from. The class that I was immediately drawn to was the Thief. It fell under the umbrella term Rogue. Rogues are people who feel that the world, and everyone in it, somehow owes them a living. While, the, while this attitude is neither evil nor cruel, it does not foster a good reputation. Many a rogue has a questionable past or a shady background he'd prefer was left uninvestigated. Specifically, I played a thief. In some ways, thieves are the epitome of roguishness. The profession of thief is not honourable, yet it is not entirely dishonourable either. The thief is a skilled pilferer. Cunning, nimbleness, and stealth are his hallmarks. Whether he turns his talent against innocent passers-by and wealthy merchants, or oppressors and monsters, is a choice for the thief to make. In my determination, I was an ethical rogue. I used my larcenous pursuits to bring justice to an already chaotic world. Game rogue to real life rogue. I found there was a lot of injustice in the game world, but equally so, there was a lot of injustice in real life. For example, there were a group of boys in my neighbourhood, a gang I suppose, who would go around causing havoc and getting away with it. I took it upon myself to take on this little gang. I knew I was outnumbered, ten to one, but that never stops a rogue. I put on a leather jacket to act as armour. I covered my face so that nobody would recognise me. I rode my bike up to a strategically located position, just on dusk, not too far from the leader's house. And then I snuck up to a bush within range of their headquarters. All the boys were congregated out the front of the house. The blue house, I would call it, due to its old lead paint that was peeling off in places and in major need of repair. I was prepared. I'd filled the pockets of my jacket with rocks, lots of sharp basalt rocks. As I was peering through the bush, waiting for the most opportune time to make my ambush, I realised they had no idea I was there. I'd turned my Dungeons & Dragons rogue into a real-life rogue. I was sneaking up on people, ready to attack. After a few minutes of waiting, I struck. I reached into my pockets and sent down two full volleys of sharp rocks. Peering through the bush, I saw that I had made contact. Boys had been struck in the head. One boy was rolling around on the floor. One boy was bleeding from his face. I didn't stick around. I dashed to my hidden bike, jumped on, and strategically raced home. That evening, I saw the boys riding around on their bikes, searching for the perpetrator, but they never found him. My mission was successful. 
Thinking back, I could have really hurt those boys, I could have even blinded them, but in my opinion at the time, they deserved it. They were thugs, they were bullies, they were the victims of groupthink and mob mentality, and I hated them. I hated the idea that people did terrible things in the name of going along with the group. 2020 – The Rogue Unleashed As we all know, 2020 unleashed another wave of groupthink. People were told to fear a virus, and anybody who disagreed, or even slightly questioned the agreed narrative, was made to feel like an outcast. How dare you not wear a mask outside, even if you're more than 50 feet from the nearest human being? How dare you not check into every building you visit? It's the only way to keep us safe. How dare you question the effectiveness of a new drug that we are going to coerce you into taking, and if you don't, you'll lose your job. How dare you question the government? How dare you? The other day, my elderly mother had to go to hospital. The security guards wouldn't let me in because I wouldn't go along with all their arbitrary rules. So what did I do? I went full rogue on them and snuck in. How did I do it? Well, a rogue can't reveal their secrets. Actually, I'd love to tell you how I got in, but if I did, YouTube would probably ban me for instructional theft or cheating, showing viewers how to steal tangible goods, or promoting dishonest behaviour. Let's just say I found an alternative way into the hospital. One has not only a legal but a moral responsibility to obey just laws. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Martin Luther King Jr. What is an unjust law? Segregating certain members of the population from the rest of society, in my opinion, is unjust. The Ethical Rogue I have no qualms about what other people do, as long as it doesn't interfere with my ability to do the same. If people want to smoke, smoke up. As long as you're not breathing smoke in my face, or of my children, go right ahead. I can't believe New Zealanders are actually going along with the lifetime smoking ban. Surely they know it's just going to send it underground and make criminals out of innocent people. If people want to wear a mask, go right ahead. I don't care. But don't dare tell me that I must do the same. The only time I wore a mask was back in my university days when I was in chemistry class. There was a chance I would breathe in acid fumes, so I didn't need to be told to wear a mask. I just did it, because I thought the idea of acid in my face and nostrils was a bad one. If people want to inject themselves with a new drug to save themselves from a microorganism, go right ahead. But the line is drawn if you try to force it onto other people. For a couple of decades, my inner rogue was in hiding. There was no need for him to come out. But now, thanks to all this government overreach of late, my rogue has revealed himself once again. I know that I'm outnumbered, I know that most people disagree with me, but guess what? That's always been true. I've always been on the wrong side. I've always been the one going against the grain. I've always been the one standing up against groupthink and mob mentality. But so what? That's obviously my natural role in this world. Am I a rogue? Or have I gone rogue? Is there even a difference? Mm -hmm.